I know when we spoke last, you referred to yourself as a ghostbuster. Yeah. Clearing homes is a, a little bit, a little different than what I've been doing. Um, it's generally about the healing path, but also opening your eyes to new possibilities. And in that sense, what we're talking about today is on target. So in this case, we're talking about healing homes. Most yeah. of the times we're talking about healing people, but yeah. it's all about intent, all about energy. Um, and, you know, I understand that now, whereas just a couple, few years ago, I didn't believe in any of this stuff. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it just, this was all, I, this was, this was all very laughable to me a couple years ago. And that's one reason why I feel like I can relate to a lot of people because if they're like, this is dumb, I'll be like, I was right there with you. I totally get where you're coming from. But what if it's not dumb? What if there's really something to it? Right. Energy leaves a wisp, right? It leaves the scent signature practically, like cooking, you know? So if you cook the same things over and over again in a house, and you someone walks into that house, they're like, hmm, I kind of smell onions. I kind of like onions. Or, hmm, I kind of smell, you know, bacon, and I'm a vegetarian. Like, you know, so yes. cooking smells can be either appealing or unappealing to, to people. Um, but they do linger after the cooking is done. And energy, I think the energy of the home, the people who are living in it, how it was being used, is a similar thing. It, it, it creates a lingering, you know, smell to use the word, you know, to go with the analogy, but it's an energy and some people are affiliative with it. They like it. And other people, you know, not so much. Um, some people really don't want their house to sell. They really don't want to leave. And, and, and just like you can feel like the person doesn't want you to sit next to them on the bus or, you know, they don't want you to sit next to them on, on the, you know, on the train, people can walk into a house for sale and feel like it's not being, you know, it's, it's not welcome. Like it's, it isn't really for sale kind of feeling. Gotcha. That makes sense. And I think a lot of people, a lot of people are even, are more, subject to energy than they think i believe because we haven't really been trained to give it a name to give it a you know like oh this is this this energy made me feel good or this energy made me feel you know enlivened or hopeful or you know whatever people are just like mm, i don't really like it <laughs> or oh, i don't know but i liked it and I think as people get more educated about energy, and I think that that's, you know, I, I agree with you. I think that a lot of these things are coming more mainline. Um, but I think they've always been around. We just need to develop a vocabulary around them so that they're easier to discuss. Right? That makes sense. Um, but the energy of a home is just so particular to all the people who've lived in it before, you know, they've all left their heel marks on the wooden floors and you can't always tell which people left, which marks, but you know, but, the, but, but those energetic signatures of a house build up and up and up. So, you know, I love, I love working with houses. Oh, it's in my experience, there's not always a ghost when there's a disruptive feeling energy. Um, there's not, um, I don't know, we probably talked about this before, but I'm not even sure when it comes to homes, there's good and bad energy. It's okay. just energy. Um, it's like a rain, right? If it floods your basement, it's a bad rain. And if it waters your garden, it's a good rain, but it's just rain, right? Mm -hmm. And I think that that happens with a lot of interior spaces, houses, land, energy runs along land lines. And so it can be going really fast in some areas, which can be very uncomfortable for some people. 
it can spread out and go slowly in other places and be very uncomfortable for people, you know? So, um, but it's also malleable. You can't direct it like water or wind, you know, which is, that's what feng shui is from. The, you know, the, the idea of feng shui is that energy moves like water or wind. Okay. And, and I think it really does. Well, I remember, um, I, I guess you were saying that you're like, my, my husband is a, is a broker and when a house doesn't sell, it goes to him. I go in the house, I clear it, then the house sells. And there are a number of different techniques that you use. Sometimes he, he said, I, I was surprised by this, but you said sometimes what it requires is an actual Ghostbusters outfit. You got to come in with the, uh, <laughs> you got to have fun with it. You need to appeal to the, uh, the guys of the, the, of the homestead. Absolutely. And, and if they can bite on it, then their intention will be, in, you know, will be congruent with the cause or, you know, with the idea that you're trying to go with. Yeah. T tell me a little bit about that. Well, you know, I think energy is all about, it starts with intention. Intention is everything. Um, if you do a lot of things in your life without intention, you're missing out, I think, on so many possibilities for mm -hmm. things. My, my job as the person who's helping match up the energy with the people is to show up in a way that the people will most buy in and become engaged in the process. So if that shows for me, call, you know, showing up in my white garb, you know, then I will. And if that shows up for me, show, showing up in my Ghostbuster outfit, I will, because their engagement is key. Because as long as they feel like we're still going to argue, even after this is done, then, then you will. The hardest energy to shift is between people's ears. Right. All, all the other energy, it's, it's, it's very, it's really easy. Huge things can change in an instant. Um, but it's our human mind that has accepted a pattern that you really, that you really have to shift. So do you hear like doors slam or creaks or what are some of the maybe jaw dropping events that. Uh, well, I, my first event at house clearing was my own house. Um, and I was not very seasoned in this and i had some fear and I was, doing a Tibetan ceremony to get rid of uh, lower ungrounded energy where you kind of start at the top of the house and you circle around and around. And what you're doing is you're collecting, collecting, collecting the energy as you come. And then you complete the ceremony by the front door and release the energy from the home. So when I <laughs> did the collecting, 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 by the time I was sitting in front of the door, completing my ceremony, the toilets were starting to flush. The doors were slamming. The phone was ringing. Anything was happening to get me to stop the completion of the wow. ceremony. And I knew even then, you know, you don't quit in the middle. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> you got to see it through. You have to see it through. And as, you know, I mean, the to I was the only one home. No one else was, flood there was, you know, I had all the toilets flushing. The phone is ringing. The door is slamming. <laughs> and I just have to keep my focus, release the gathered energies, you know, thank them and release them and bless them on to their next higher evolutionary place. And then there was peace. So after that experience, your, your first experience in your own home, after that, you were like, that was pretty cool. I'm going to do this. Oh, no. <laughs> I wouldn't imagine. <laughs> I would be so far away from that place. I'd be like, 
I'm not doing this. I mean, I'm glad I got rid of him out of my own home. And I'm not going into anybody else's home. <laughs> yeah. No, no. There was a little, like, for real? So if you had just, like, a, a basic, and if someone said, oh, well, I, I believe my place has something funky in it, and I'd like to rid my home of it, are there a brief certain number of steps that you would say, hey, look, you know, do this and start with this and have the right attitude and right intention. And is there something that you could maybe pass along? So you can do it with, if you like to use smoke, you know, you can use, you know, you can use smoke like from the sage. If you, you like to use sound, you know, you can use bells or drums or, you know, if you can use breath, you can clap a space, you know, you can go around and clap your hands in a space and you'll find stagnant energy that way often because the clapping sounds a little flat. So you just keep clapping your hands until it sounds crisp and it, you know, you can snap a space until it sounds crisp and then you can go on. You know, you can, you can blow, you know, you can use your breath to alter the energy in a space. Um, and if you're doing a lot of those methods, just open a door, let it out, open a window you know, let it, let it go and then invite nature in to replace it, you know, intentionally put something in there that you want in, in the space. So it can just be that simple, you know, just, it takes a little, like sometimes you have to, you have to think about it. What does this look like to me? What does this feel like to me? Whatever your, you know, if, if you're auditory, what does this sound like to me? You know, if, if this energy that I'm feeling was a sound, what would it be? You know, if this energy was a was a smell, what would it be? You know, you can use aromatherapy then. You know, you can change it with essences and oils if that's what you know touches your heart. You know, so when I'm working with a client, I'm trying to figure out where is you know what is this to them? What's what is what is it to them? And if there's no client, you know, if it's an empty house. And my real estate husband would like to sell an empty house that's being owned by the bank. I need to go talk to the house and say, like, what do we have here? And this, you know, tell me what's happened from your perspective. You know, you become a little bit of a counselor. <laughs> like, okay, house, <laughs> tell me what's happened from your perspective. And, you know, this is, this is what we, you know, in the human world need at this point from you. You know, where, where's your buy-in? <laughs> okay. How can I convince you? How can I get you on board to help? But things are what they are. So that's what they want to be, right? So a house is there because it would like to be a house. So, you know, what kind of family do you want to have in here? Do you want, you know, what kind of people do you want in here? Do you want a family? Do you want a single person? You know, what do you want? And then like, let's call that energy in. Let's call in the energy of that family or call in the energy of those, you know, I want an artist here. So like, let's call in the energy of an artist. And how do we find that? What does that look like? And call it into the space and fill it up and build the energy and it will, it will bloom. <laughs>